Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton, and this is episode number 95. On this episode, we will be discussing why I think it's so important to periodize your approach to body composition, aka, for most people, fat loss. So those of you that have been following along know that I take an approach that is, you know, it can go by a variety of titles that are fairly similar. At this current time, I'm referring to it as periodized nutrition, or sometimes it's called seasons, but I thought that's a little confusing because they're not all three months. Anyway, so we'll call it periodized nutrition. Okay. So through this episode, I'm going to try and stop and define phrases as I use them. So hopefully that will be help. A couple of definitions that we might want to start with. Periodize. (laughs) Basically, it has the word period in it, right? I'm going to give common sense definitions. I'm not looking these up. This is what I mean by using these words. Periodize. It's the word period in it. It's to... Uh, make distinct periods, so periodize, right, to make into periods, to make into lengths, specifically defined periods of time, right? So we might say like, oh, I was going to do sports, but I don't even know. But like in sports, there's a, in a game, there's a quarter, right? It's, it's a quarter of the game. It's a period. Or if you remember from school, there were periods, right? It was a class and time space, right? So a period usually has a time component and it's defined within those things. So a period of doing one thing before you change what you're doing. Periodization, to divide up into periods. I'm going to try and do this quicker, but I'm very repeaty. All right. So the next phrase you should know is metabolic adaptation. So metabolic adaptation I've talked about in previous podcasts. That is the fact that our metabolism is adaptive. What does adaptive mean? Well, it's another way of saying like responsive. So if I do X, you do Y. You're adapting based on my behavior. So our metabolism is not just one-way communication. It adapts to the environment. So If you are restricting calories for a long time, you're on a quote unquote diet, your metabolism ramps down your metabolic rate so that you don't die. That's the the thing, right? So metabolism is adaptive. So the term is metabolic adaptation. It will come up later as I talk about things. Okay, so this periodization concept is really taken from the bodybuilder world where they have what I would call four distinct phases, a cut, which many people just call a diet, which is also maybe called a reduction period. It's where you are reducing your energy intake with the goal of reduced body fat potentially also reduce muscles in the bodybuilding world. They may have put on more muscle than they want to for, I don't know, like maybe there's like a a weight limit, competition limit. So there might be a reason, but more often than not, it's about body fat, but it could be about muscle mass as well. But a cut is to reduce. It's a period of time you're focused on reduction. Reverse, which I would define as slowly increasing energy intake with the goal of increasing metabolic hormones and your caloric ceiling. So a reverse is a very specific act. If you're starting a reverse from a cut, you are just very slowly bumping up your calories. So if you ended your cut at 
1500 calories, you might go to 1600 and then to 1700 and then to 1800, just slowly bumping that up because you're trying to avoid sort of the blowback effect of, of having a binge or raising your calories really fast. So you're taking your time to get there on that type of reverse. Then there's maintenance, which is really just being at your caloric appropriate level so that you're neither gaining nor losing weight, maintenance, maintaining your weight. And then there's something in the bodybuilder world called a bulk, which would be when you're eating above your maintenance calories by some amount. There can be like a big bulk or a moderate bulk or a small bulk. You're in a caloric surplus by some degree with the intention of adding total body weight but focus primarily for most on adding more muscle than body fat. But to add more muscle in a leaner body, you often just need to eat more. So that's the bulk. So those are the four phases that maybe a bodybuilder would use. But these are adapted to more of the audience that might listen to me, which would be your average. I mean, none of you are average. You are all above average in every way. But your standard, I don't know what the right word is, common, that sounds terrible. Um, The wonderful people who listen to me who are likely not bodybuilders in the sense of entering bodybuilding competitions, but are instead people looking to get into a better body composition balance than they currently are experiencing. How is that? Can I be a PR person? I think I can. All right. So in my world, which is now your world, These are the four phases I talk about, which is a cut, which is similar to the bodybuilder cut. It's a fat loss oriented reduction in energy intake so that you will have less body fat as a goal. Then there's the what I call the reverse PM, which is specifically Uh, referring to it as pursuing maintenance. So if you're just coming out of a cut or a diet, right? Some of us have never, in fact, really did a well thought out or well planned maintenance period. So we honestly have no idea what our appropriate maintenance calories are. And if we did in the past, we now weigh something different. So we don't really know. So this reverse PM, pursuing maintenance, is a place where you can jump up in calories a little more extremely by maybe a couple hundred, but then you're kind of, it's kind of like you're feeling around in the dark. Where is my caloric ceiling? Where is the top of my maintenance range? Because although I'll get into this in a second, maintenance is a range. It's not just a single number. So you want to find your range and preferably the top of it. And so you're, you're having to kind of go slowly It's like, you know, you're feeling for the edge of the step or trying to find the light switch in a dark closet. Whatever analogy you want to make, you got to go slow so you don't hurt yourself because it's dark and you don't know where anything is. That's what I call this, this type of reverse or pursuing maintenance reverse. Then there's maintenance, which is the same as the bodybuilders. It's being in a homeostasis, that home base of you're maintaining your energy balance, you're neither gaining nor losing. Now your weight will fluctuate based on just water weight changes, totally normal, but you're not gaining or losing body fat, right? Or really significantly any muscle mass. But maintenance is this idea that you're maintaining. And then reverse, so another reverse, there are two reverses, which I call AM, reverse PM and reverse AM. Above maintenance is what AM stands for. Now, this is replacing what was called the bulk in uh, the bodybuilder world because for the average human, we don't need to quote unquote bulk. There's this thing we could say we want, we may in certain circumstances be looking to eat in a very slight surplus above our maintenance. And I feel like the word bulk just overemphasizes what that might look like. So I call this above maintenance which is you're you're very slowly 
bumping up the energy intake just above maintenance, maybe doing it in a gradual bump up and then bump up again and then bump up again fashion. And you do this in order to, well, maybe you said, well, my maintenance calories are really much lower than I think they should be. I want to have a better maintenance caloric intake. I'm going to try and do a reverse AM to bump up my metabolic rate, to give myself more energy. Maybe I feel like if I had more energy intake, things would work better. I want to increase my activity. So there can be a lot of reasons you might do this in certain very specific circumstances. So we've gone through now the phases. We've got the cut, the reverse PM, maintenance, and the reverse AM. So how long do we do these various phases will really vary. But I wanted to introduce these concepts, go over some of the pros and cons, explain again why it's so important to me to periodize these things. So why is it important to me and why have I learned on my journey myself and with my clients that we shouldn't just be starting on a cut phase and then just staying there forever? Well, you know, some of it can depend. If we are very, very heavy, very far over what is sort of a a healthy body fat range. Our body does have certain protections built in because we've got so much body fat. It's not as harmful for us to be on a very long cut if we're, say, 400 pounds. So getting from 400 pounds to 200 pounds, we might find that that's not a huge deal that we did that without a break. But the closer we get into sort of the healthy range of body fat, the more sensitive and vulnerable our body becomes. Now I wanna stop for a second and say, it does happen that people even at these higher body fat ranges fall into these problems too. So I'm not saying those people shouldn't follow what I'm talking about, I think they should. It's simply a little less damaging if they don't. And I find a lot of people don't in those ranges. And I don't want them thinking that they've screwed everything up. Everything can be fixed. But one of the reasons we might find that people say, well, I was doing great. I was losing out of weight. And then just out of nowhere, it felt like I got down to 200 pounds or 225 or 180, whatever that number is for you. And then it just wouldn't budge and I couldn't get anywhere. It just stalls bill, right? So why is it so damaging to be in a very long cut, right? So some of us will just be like, well, these were, and by the way, I did this, not saying I didn't, and I even taught about this, and I'm like, no, this is bad now. And I've said that for a while now, but like once upon a time, I didn't know that this wasn't okay, and so that's why I talk about it, because I don't think a lot of people don't know that this isn't okay. So when you're on that extended cut, your body adapts. Remember I talked about metabolic adaptation and your body, it's like year two of the famine. That's what it thinks is happening when you're trying to lose weight for a long period of time. Your body loves you. It wants to keep you alive and it wants you to maintain as much of your mass as possible, quite honestly. And so it will downregulate your metabolism including some very important hormones like your thyroid, right? And you will just get into a place where you will struggle more and more. Additionally, you might start to find that your hunger hormones become really wacky and it becomes harder. Like I'll hear a lot of people say, this used to be easy and now I'm suddenly struggling with wanting to binge or eat off plan. I don't understand what's changed. When you stay in a cut phase too long, and a cut phase would be eating at an energy intake level, so a caloric intake, when I say energy, you can think calories. It's just a unit of measure. I'm not saying calories in, calories out is a simple equation. I'm simply saying they are a unit of measure, so we're using that unit of measure. When you're in a deficit for too long and or too extreme a deficit, right, so, Uh, You have a certain energy need that will keep your weight stable. You eat below that, supposedly you'll lose weight. You eat above that, supposedly you'll gain weight, right? That's how that thing works. But it gets very complicated in there. But if you're in an extreme 
deficit, which is you're very low in terms of calories, these things happen faster. These adaptations happen faster. So then you tend to end up really frustrated, really hungry, and feeling like complete garbage because you're not getting the kind of energy intake you need. All sorts of bad things are happening, which is why it is then so important to spend time in your maintenance. Now, you can kind of look at the reverses, like cut and maintenance are like different floors in your little house and reverses are staircases between them. So a reverse is a very active period between either a cut and maintenance or on top of your maintenance to try and sort of reset to the next level of maintenance, if you will. So if you've been in a cut for a long time and a lot of people who come to me have already been in a cut for a long time, whether that's been keto or pre-keto, because let's honestly talk about the fact that almost all of us who struggle with our weight have been in perhaps what they might call a decade-long cut, alternating with uh, periods of binging, right? There's been very little what one would call normal, healthy eating. Now, I'm not talking about every single one of you. Some of you have been doing great most of the time. Please do not take offense. But for a lot of us, our lives have looked like periods of extreme restriction punctuated by periods of constant drive-through experiences, right? And so that constant yo-yo is uh, really horrible. Because we've basically lived in either binge land or restrictia, we've never lived in maintenanceville. And so maintenance becomes one of the most powerful, important phases to learn how to do well. And it's a big struggle for my clients for the first time when I'm putting them into maintenance. I'm saying like, hey, we need to spend some time here in maintenance. One, some of them get angry because they're like, do you not see? Do you not see the fat on my body? Do you not see how unhappy you I am? Do you not see this? This is unacceptable to me that you want me to stay here? No, I don't want to do that. But the reality is, if what you were doing was working, you wouldn't have hired me. We have to do it differently. We have to get you in relationship with your body in such a way that you know what good, healthy, plentiful eating looks like. Not minimal amount of food I can get by with and not die. Not, oh, I'm no longer starving, but actually what your body wants and desires. Because at this maintenance level, and I'm talking about not like bare bones maintenance, right? As I said, maintenance is a range. So you might find that you can maintain your weight, I'm just going to pull numbers out of the air here, from 1,700 calories to 2,000 calories, and a lot of people, they might be like, well, I got to, I'm out 17, okay, I'm at 17. And they spend, you know, some time at 17, but they would have maintained the exact same weight at 2000. Why is that? Well, because of metabolic adaptation. We have these ways in which our bodies will actually turn our metabolism up at various times and also turn things up like non-exercise activity, we feel full of energy, we feel raring to go, we want to get some stuff done, how much energy we burn changes. So maintenance is always a range. And I want people at the top of their range, not the bottom of their range. Good things happen when you give yourself almost a surplus, but not quite a surplus, right? And so I get comments from people when they finally get into this range. They're like, oh my gosh, I wanted to go for a walk. I never want to go for a walk. Oh, I felt like I slept better because you do sleep better. All sorts of positive things start to happen. So spending time in this period is hormonally and metabolically expensive. It's also expensive. Wow, important. It's also very important from a mental reworking perspective. Because as I said, a lot of us, if not most of us, have spent our life on a diet or on a binge. And spending some time where you do not expect to lose weight and you get okay with that being your goal, that you can remind yourself, 
hey, my goal isn't to lose weight right now. My goal is to maintain your weight, my weight. I'm doing well maintaining my weight. I'm doing the right thing maintaining my weight. It allows, well, it's a struggle, but some of your demons will start to be exposed and some of the voices in your head will start to talk in a way that you can be conscious and aware and and the adult in this relationship for once. And instead of feeling like, oh, I'm a bad person because I didn't lose weight this week, be like, I didn't lose weight this week. That was my goal. I now have more attention to put on my life in other ways. I don't have to constantly feel like I should be losing weight. Now, I'm not saying you should you should erase the thought that you have long-term goals, but it's not your goal right now. And maintenance is a great time to do things like start a new exercise routine, not to quote unquote burn calories, but to maybe add some muscle, to work on your cardiovascular fitness, right? Not everything has to be about the number on the scale. In fact, very little should be about the number on the scale. It should be about how you think, you feel, you function, all of that. Now, some of the habits that you can pick up during maintenance, sleeping better, moving your body more, lifting weights, adding muscle mass, all of those kinds of things will ultimately help you when you next decide to undertake a fat loss phase. But you've got to you got to put in the work now here in maintenance. There is a time period where it will feel uncomfortable and then there's a time period where your body will relax into it, begin to trust that we're staying here for a little while and then really good things can start to happen. Now, at that point, once you've been in maintenance for a while, you can get to a place where you're like, okay, I feel actually, instead of just desperate for another cut, I feel ready. I feel ready for the challenge of another cut. Let's take that on. And then you can go into another cut period where you're making intelligent decisions around how much to eat and when, and because of the work you've put in through your reverse cycles and your maintenance cycles, this cut cycle can be much more successful. As I've said before, after a good long reverse and then period of maintenance a couple of years ago, I was able to fairly easily lose another 35 pounds that had been impossible for me to lose prior to doing my reverse and then maintenance period. I had been stuck, stuck, stuck. And I just said, okay, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to take the time. And then I was able to make the needle move again. And so I think periodization is the key to long-term success because the other part about maintenance is when you do maintenance periods, even before you reach your final weight loss goal, Some people might refer to it as practice. You are practicing an intelligent management of your weight, which again, most of us have not done in our lives. It's always diet or off the rails. And so many of my clients have gained and lost and gained and lost and gained and lost and gained and lost. They're coming to me, they're 60, 70, 75, right? And they're saying, I have never not either been on a diet or gaining weight. I'm either losing or I'm gaining. And practicing how to be in appropriate maintenance level is one of the most powerful things you can learn how to do. So if you are someone who's listening to this podcast and you've spent your time up till now on a cut and or banging your head into a wall, being on a cut that is no longer effective, I would argue that it's perhaps time to find your maintenance level, find the ceiling of your maintenance level, and stay there for a couple of months before you think about undertaking another cut. The good news I have for you is if you are already stalled and not seeing progress, you're in something that can be referred to, according to my friend Mike Berta, as involuntary maintenance. And involuntary maintenance is not the same thing as maintenance because, generally speaking, involuntary maintenance is at the bottom of your caloric threshold. You're not getting the full benefit of maintenance. You're not getting the mental benefit of maintenance because you're still in your cut mindset. So you're feeling like you're failing, 
So instead, turn it around, go to a true maintenance period, and make yourself succeed by not losing weight. When you redevelop your relationship to success, that will also help you in the future because how we think about ourselves matters in terms of our weight loss success. The brain is a very powerful thing and if we feel like a failure, we will probably act like one too. So how long should these phases last? I would say that generally speaking, a cut phase should last with some exception no longer than about 12 weeks. If you are of significant body fat, so for a woman above 50%, if that went to 20 weeks, I don't think that's a real big problem, maybe even 24, but I wouldn't go longer than that without taking a break into a maintenance period. How long should a maintenance period be? Well, optimally, it would be about the same length as your last cut. That being said, again, if you're at a higher body fat percentage and your last cut was six months, right, 24 weeks, I'm not suggesting that you do a six-month maintenance, although that would be of benefit, but at least three months of a maintenance period would be beneficial. The lower your body fat is, the shorter your cuts should be, and the longer your maintenance period should be, quite honestly. I think our bodies are become much more sensitive to these fluctuations in these different periods when we are at lower and lower body fat numbers and you have to do a lot more precision in those places. And so depending on where you are in your journey, some of these have different time periods, but as a general rule, if you're in that group of people that's maybe somewhere between 45-ish and 30-ish percent body fat in that range, I would say going 12 weeks of a cut and 12 weeks of maintenance with a reverse in between. So a 12 week cut, a reverse period um, where maybe you take your caloric intake at the end of that cut. So you might have in that cut started at one caloric intake and stepped down at some point. So taking the end period, the end time caloric intake, looking at it in terms of starting from there on your reverse. Now, you can do a little bit of a jump at the beginning, say instead of going up by 50 or 100 calories, you might go up by 250, kind of depends how extreme your cut got. But then in those last couple hundred, say, calories, you're just stepping up slowly. So one week you might be at, uh, so if you ended your cut at 1400, now you're going to jump up to 1600 right away. But then the next week you try 1675, 1700. You do that on average a day for a week. Then you jump up a little bit more, jump up a little bit more. You're kind of stair stepping your way up until you find you've reached a level where you seem to be maybe gaining a little bit of weight that's not just water weight. Always be aware when you jump from a cut to maintenance you will gain two or three pounds of water weight. It is not body fat, it's just that you have more food in you. Don't include that in the calculation. But if you see now, oh, now that's stabilized after a week or two, but now my weight has started to creep up. Your average weight, not just a random number, remember fluctuations occur. And then you'd be like, okay, I think I found the top. You can step it back a half step, and then you're just gonna stay there for 12-ish weeks. So how long that reverse takes, it's variable from person to person. Then you stay at that maintenance for about 12 weeks. Your cut was about 12 weeks. Now your maintenance is about 12 weeks. And then at the end of that, you can decide where you want to go from there. So hopefully that gave you an overview of how to use periodization in your life. And hopefully that uh, will be helpful. So I cannot put in enough good words for maintenance. I think everyone should experience it. And don't think it's reserved only for people who have finally achieved weight loss nirvana and find themselves at the perfect weight for them. Because uh, if I'm going to share a little secret, um, pretty much everyone is confused about maintenance and the more practice you have with it, the better off you'll be. Take care, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. If you have questions, let me know what they are. You can find me in the Facebook group, Keto Life Support, and I hope that you will join me again next week. 
Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.